So, do you need a rain screen, or is it just a waste of money? Between all these different drainage products and cladding systems, it can really seem like more unnecessary components that different manufacturers are putting out to get you to spend more money that we've never had to install before. In this video, we're talking all about rain screens, whether you need a rain screen, and the importance of these drainable cladding systems for the long-term durability of the building. Now first, let's quickly define what a rain screen is, just so that we're all on the same page. A rain screen is simply a ventilated drainage gap between the exterior cladding or siding and the water-resistive barrier. This ventilated gap assumes that the cladding will leak and allows water to drain out that bypasses the cladding using gravity. The second part of the rain screen is the ventilation side. The gap has to be large enough to allow an adequate amount of airflow to dry out the droplets left behind. It also allows air to carry away any moisture diffusing out of the sheathing through the water-resistive barrier. The ventilated gap provides the benefits of convective drying. We actually have a whole video explaining the concept behind rain screens, which you can go and watch up here. But the million dollar question is, do you actually need a rain screen? We didn't need them before, right? Well, we've had some fundamental changes in the building industry over the last couple of decades that have completely changed the way that we have to build in order to achieve a long-lasting and durable structure without moisture problems and mold issues. What were these changes? The first big change was the shift towards engineered lumber, particularly OSB. Prior to engineered wood, buildings were constructed out of old growth sawn lumber, which had the ability to absorb and store a lot more moisture without failing due to the density of the wood and the high resin content. Then homes and buildings started to get sheathed with plywood. Not nearly as good as board sheathing, but still a good product that reduced waste. But then, we started adopting OSB or oriented strand board, as well as other engineered wood products like LVLs, PSLs, high density fiberboard, and other engineered wood products that are basically composed of a bunch of adhesives, preservatives, and much smaller strands of wood. This stuff is a lot more moisture sensitive and has the potential to deteriorate a lot more quickly as there is a lot less real wood in the product, making it easy to break down by mold and rot fungus. Another big change in the industry has been this widespread push towards more energy efficient buildings, which probably started with the 1970s oil crisis. Energy became a lot more expensive, so in order to offset those costs, the idea is to improve energy efficiency, to reduce the amount of consumption. This escalated to more and more efficient buildings, which meant that we started insulating buildings with more and more insulation to keep that heat inside, or if you're in a warm climate, to reduce the runtime of the air conditioning units. But that's exactly the problem. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you probably have some understanding of the inverse relationship between energy efficiency and drying potential. Heat is required for drying. If we reduce the amount of heat flow through the building, we reduce the drying potential and the building stays wetter for a longer period of time. If the building is wet and can't dry out, we get mold and rot. These days, we're even seeing moisture issues in hot, dry climates because we're building out of moisture-sensitive components and insulating to such a degree that we don't have the same drying potential anymore. So this brings us to rain screens and the importance of drainage. We can't just attach our cladding directly over our water-resistive barrier because water that bypasses the cladding can be held in tension against the waterproofing, and if we have water held in tension, it has a high likelihood of migrating through the imperfections in the membrane, such as the nail holes and seams. As as little as a half inch water column can exert the equivalent pressure of a 35 mile per hour wind driven rain. That water doesn't just dry out as it used to in the old days, we are building with more moisture sensitive materials and insulating the cavities, so if water gets in, it has a very difficult time drying out. A rain screen alleviates the risk of this by draining that water away before it becomes a problem and facilitating drying via ventilation. As we alluded to before, this ventilated gap can also help to reduce the effects of interstitial condensation. If it's cold outside and we don't have any exterior insulation, warm moisture laden air generated from the interior has the potential to condense on the back side of the sheathing. However, if that condensation can dry out to the exterior into the ventilated gap, we can prevent deterioration, provided that the rate of drying exceeds the rate of wetting. This is sort of the same concept as a vented attic. Now, there are some legitimate reasons not to have a ventilated rain screen, but rather just a simple drainage gap. We still want the benefits of being able to drain water out that gets behind the cladding, but sometimes we don't want to introduce the airflow. Homes and buildings and wildfire zones should avoid ventilated rain screens because it can allow fire to travel within the gap, up the walls, and onto the underside of the roof structure. We really want to avoid that if possible if we are building in this type of area.
So rain screens are certainly not a waste of money. In fact, they are the single thing that could probably save your building from a bunch of moisture related failures as they provide an immense amount of redundancy to the building. And the fact is that buildings need that redundancy nowadays because we aren't building out of very durable materials anymore and we're insulating the heck out of our homes and structures. Rain screens are cheap insurance against future moisture problems and there are a ton of ways to build a ventilated rain screen. Don't feel like you're limited to just a single product that a manufacturer or an influencer is pushing on you. There are certain reasons to use specific rain screen products. Good old fashioned furring strips work great for a wide range of different applications. However, if you have concerns about long-term durability, it might be best to use a synthetic plastic furring strip instead, or something like entangled mesh, if you want to eliminate the risk of those wood furring strips deteriorating. Sometimes you need the wood furring strips over the plastic furring strips and mesh because you're installing exterior insulation, and you need the withdrawal strength from a wood batten. Maybe you need a steel hat channel because your assembly has to be non-combustible. There are so many different ways to achieve the same result, but the physics don't change. Guys, if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at assiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.